Friday afternoon, folks. Ed Ralston here in downtown Honolulu studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Actually, we've fished, switched the studio over to the uh, Diamond Head side of town. This is the Elks Club. You can see the sun setting in the background as the day is running out here. And we are the last thing, Josh, the last thing between people going off and having a, 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 a weekend. Uh, we are it. Anyway, welcome you on board, Josh Levy, a recent master's degree graduate from UH. Uh, first time on the show. Although your boss was here on the show before you. Yeah, That's was. the wrong order, you know, Josh. But anyway, <laughs> she did well. So we got Josh here, and we have on Lanai standing by. We have uh, George Purdy. George, you there? Hello. Hi, Hawaii. How are you guys doing today? Okay, okay there's George. Uh, Happy New Year to you, George, and Happy New Year to all of our, our watchers and listeners and such. And uh, where the drone leads, uh, this is about the 100th episode of this show now, which has been um, going on for a long time. And it's getting bigger, uh, audience is growing, and the number of people we bring on, incredible. Uh, it's been a, quite an experience for all of us, and I'm just kind of advertising that for the way we start the year. But we selected uh, for this year, year 2017, to be the year of community involvement. And uh, uh, Josh Levy is on the show for that reason. He's probably the uh, right up there at the top of our community involvement chain, George Purdy, Michael Mota may be in later. But um, if we don't do community involvement and make community involvement center to our UAS activities here in Hawaii, we will be not working as fast and as effectively as we could. Uh, and the, the dimensions and the elements within community involvement take on un, un, unknown uh, breadth to them and, and depth and, and color. It's fascinating to see it work. And uh, uh, George is a master at that. You're a master at that. And Michael Moda, uh, thank you all for uh, being so good at that. Anyway. Um, Josh, uh, your involvement has been through the uh, Makai side, the marine uh, inshore coral health management. Tell us a little bit about that, how it worked, and how you got into drones for that particular piece of your work. So it's actually a funny story. So my, my brother, who's three years my younger, he, um, he's an engineering student and has always loved building things and mostly breaking them afterwards and then refixing them again. And drones obviously was the most perfect thing for that because you know he'd build them these wooden platforms out of balsa wood and some hardwood in between and that allowed him to crash them whenever he wanted and I'd be there watching him crash them and laughing at him a lot um, but after I came out here and um, and actually Cindy my, my, my old advisor uh, first bought a drone for the lab and actually I think this is the HIMB the Hawaii Marine Biology Lab um, yes, yes, the Hawaii Institute of, of Marine mm, Biology okay. and, and UH Manoa as well, both campuses together. Um, so she bought one for, for, her, for her specific lab. Um, I think under direction of you, I, I, I think she was, she was trying, to have, um, trying to use it for a certain project. And because I'd had this um, experience with drones for a couple of years with my brother, I'd, I'd already been thinking about the various applications. Yeah, you were wired already. Exactly. Yeah, I, kind okay. of, I was like, okay, we can use this. This is definitely a thing that we can, we can be utilizing for various, you know, remote sensing, whether it's reefs or agriculture or anything like that. And because I've been in the marine biology um, track for so long, that's immediately what I went to. So I was, I was convinced that we can get this to work. And uh, so over the past couple of years, I've been, first of all, learning how to fly them, learning the different sensors and all the different mapping technologies that we have to use um, in order to actually get necessary data and the useful data that we can then use to see how our reefs are doing and if there's any way that we can help them improve. Um, so the, the reason why looking at reefs from a drone is so interesting is that you're covering a lot more area than you would either, either snorkeling or scuba diving, but you're getting this, almost the same amount of information mm. and detail from the corals themselves. So you can actually get an equivalent level of, of an analyzable data. So it drone. obviously depends on the question that you're asking, but for the majority of the stuff, as long as you're not looking you know, at, a, at a single you know, animal or a single polyp that's in, inside of, of, of a coral, um, you can get a really good idea about what's going on at the colony level. So you're getting around you know, less than a centimeter resolution per, yeah, for, for so each pixel. Can, you so you can get the whole colony looked at, and then you can decide where to go to get that up close work with a snorkel and, and mask. Exactly, And you yeah. don't have to waste your time going everywhere for that. That's, yeah. pretty, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. And while you're saying that, we should uh, point out that you've been working in Kanye Bay for some time. We should give a shout out to uh, Jason and Paul over there at the Marine Corps <laughs> Air Station. Yes for their leadership coming forward and working on a, a, a formal arrangement between UH and the Marine Corps that allows proper and, and safe use of drones in that airspace. Yeah, that routinely is their as airspace. well, that's the important thing as well, yeah. because I mean, you know, many people can go out there and, and do, you know, and fly for a couple of minutes here and there, but if it's, if it's going to be routine, it's, there's a you know, much higher risk of, of any interaction with 
the Marine Corps based um, aircraft and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we they, they've done a really good job of being completely open and, and allowing us to to kind of set set up a really clean, easy way to communicate between the two different um, the two different um, entities and allowing us to conduct safe operations. There's so much we could uh, we could take this conversation. There's three things that come to mind right away. First of all, that very issue of uh, the formal structure, but open and friendly and transparent relationship with the with the uh, airspace user that's that's essential in in the future of drone business and we need to take what you've done in Kaneohe Bay and include that with the schools local schools in the area uh, and then get into the Department of Education and have within the Department of Education a common and standard understanding and appropriate relationships with the various schools and their school districts Kaneohe Bay in particular we've got Castle we've got uh, um, King. We've got a few schools in the area that are already interesting or interested in, in, in going forth, but they don't know where to turn to get the kind of guidance they need. So, Josh, you become the guy that can uh, provide a lot of that. Uh, hopefully, yeah. yeah hopefully okay. we can make that all work. That would be, uh, be great. A second vector that seems to be really useful here is you mentioned already the data and the extractions from the information that allow people to make decisions about the coral and about maybe even about fisheries management at some point in time for all I know, and, and uh, reef, I mean, and the beach erosion management. Mm -hmm. That's the community outreach aspect. That's where the value is. The drone is nothing but a skyhook holding a camera or some other kind of a sensor. So you are sitting at the, at the intersection of two of the major elements here of uh, moving forward and working with the community. Yep. And that's going to be a really essential part of our actions next year. And that, that we turn to George on that. George. Um, I got to tell you, everybody, that we had, George was up at a conference with uh, me and up in Alaska, and uh, uh, about 500 people there or so, and, and George became the, the highlight of the show. Uh, his, <laughs> his work with the schools and his work with uh, community outreach, community involvement, and his unique ability to express these things in, an, in, a, in a way that made sense to the people who were involved uh, was just getting... Uh, I think they were even throwing um, roses on the ice after he was done ice skating. It was, it was uh, such a hit up there, George. So, George, I uh, always look to you as a leadership, uh, for your leadership in that domain. How's things going on Lanai these days and uh, with uh, Pulama and moving forward? Uh, Pulama is uh, actually uh, helping them develop a drone program. So they're entering into their emergency management, also land management and uh, data collection. Um, for the island and we're going to actually partner up with uh, some of the kids from school with their GIS program and actually try to do internship. So one of the projects that the kids want to do is actually take a section of land and actually use a drone to map it and uh, start collecting the data over time of types of erosion, uh, maybe some facial recognition of invasive species of plants and, and things like that. When is that going to start George? Uh, hopefully we get going sometime next month. That's fantastic. And uh, yeah. we, we, we have a similar activity up in Pololo. We have a similar activity that Mike is doing in uh, Manakuli with traffic management. So we're beginning to see these uh, pieces starting to happen. And what we need to do is make sure that what you are doing, George, in terms of standards and, and standard operating practices and, and such and procedures for making that outreach to the public, that we all learn from what you're doing and trans laid as much of that over to Oahu as we can and to Kauai and other locations. So we need to work with you on that and, and stay together. Yeah. So we also want to try to get this as a pilot program for when they become seniors to actually do a senior project where a group of kids actually take a section of the island and actually map it, uh, do research on it. And now we archive that in, into Lanai High School's uh, database. And over time, as many of these generations and classes graduate, they start mapping different parts of the island and eventually we'll put it into a mosaic of the whole entire island. And then that way we'll have general um, generations and connections to the land itself. And the community is all in it. That, that, uh, how do you do that, George? <laughs> I just think a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So we'll, but, uh, we'll, we'll get, some, get, some, get some publicity out on that. Will there be some uh, ways that we on Oahu can associate with what you're doing on Lanai and follow you? Yeah, I mean, it'll be where it's a platform that, you know, it depends on the community itself. It, it'll be adjustable to fit, but the foundation of using it and the concept of a 
school senior project in high school, I think that'll be, that'll just set the community in the right direction where they'll have their kids. And as they grow up and they come back to, um, to their school reunions, they can actually pull up all these video and actually show what they did in the past. And I think that's really bringing back from what we're learning through what UH has done, you know, with all the ho new Hawaiian history that's coming out. These drones are really going to capture everything and set a new, new way forward in documenting Hawaii as a state itself. We need to get this uh, story, this copy of this actual tape from today, to a guy named Kalani Kaanaana over at the uh, at the Tourist Bureau. Kalani is uh, uh, the guy who's in, in charge and responsible for uh, making sure that uh, cultural connection and cultural uh, respect and, and continuity exists within the tourist industry. And I think there's a good connection there between what you're doing, George, and what uh, this would support what Kalani has to do. So I'd love to get a hold of uh, Brother Kalani and see how that uh, how that can tie together. Oh, that's and perfect because now that sets up um, where these students now can see where they can actually go in the future and work for the tourist industry, work for research, or create their own business. That's fantastic. It just opens a lot of doors. You know, there's some other doors I want to talk about in a minute uh, after we get back from our first break here. But uh, one of the things that uh, we, I think, need to always do is put in front of the students as they're getting into these uh, programs what would they do if they could run the world in terms of how would they want drones to be used? How would they want them to be managed from a, a handheld control perspective? How would they want the sensors to evolve and this sort of thing? I think there's a, an entire element of research in that area uh, leading to ultimately new products that, uh, and product directions that would be great to inspire that bunch uh, as we consider them our future workforce. We'll talk about that when we get back from our first break. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, citizen journalism from Hawaii, finding the intersection of our sense of place and our place in the world, right here at home. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, a way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. I pity the fool who ain't watching this show at 12 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Stan, the energy man, watch it. Folks, once again, uh, Ted Rawlston and Josh Levy here in the studio in Honolulu, actually Waikiki today, and we have George uh, Purdy on Lanai. George, we need some backdrops from Lanai sometime to move this program over there, <laughs> which we can do it by virtual means, you know. Anyway, we're, uh, I'll send you some. Okay, great. We're uh, having the last segment of our show, the first show for 2017 of Where the Road Leads, Where the Drone Leads, actually, and we're talking about community involvement, and there are so many aspects to that. We uh, so many examples, so many uh, aspects, and it's, uh, that's where the value really is in getting into the community. But we're just talking about uh, uh, sensors and how sensor anal analytics might want to improve and, and move in the future. And, and Josh, it was interesting to uh, hear you uh, talking about uh, the 
integrated and whole answer coming out without you having to put all the pieces together. That made me think, what if drones in two years from now came out with that kind of software in them so that anybody who's out there, <coughs> properly operating, of course, mm -hmm. would be able to record information on the reef, even if you weren't there, and you download it to a database somewhere, like, kind of like what George was saying, and it continually updates. You could crowdsource the, the picture of the reef. Ted, you're stealing my business plan. I'm sorry. You're stealing my business plan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I, I, exactly. That's, that's, that, is, that is the goal, to have this be such an easy-to-use technology that you can give it to coastal communities throughout the tropics and throughout anywhere, really, that are interested in their, in their local community and their, their local you know, marine resources and, and want to know how they're doing. And they, they can have a full UAS system and they, all they have to do is press a button, the thing goes out and flies, collects this data, and then you know, all the processing and everything becomes completely autonomous and they get you know, almost uh, immediate results and they can see exactly what's going on. And they have the ability to go out and you know, fly and collect this information whenever they want, wherever they want within the local area and have that become and then a global database of you know, coral reef health or whatever coastal, coastal um, marine health you, you want to have. Or Hawaiian archaeology, for that matter. Yeah, archaeology, or, agriculture, anything. Yeah, pre precision agriculture, any of those things. So mm -hmm. that we, we're hearing that requirement over and over again. I need something I can just take the box out of the tractor, put it on the ground, and it returns with the information I need. And I, it's downloaded, and it shows up on a screen somewhere. Exactly. Uh, so, and it's uh, close. A, a really interesting aspect, then, of the community involvement would be get get back from the community what their needs are. Mm -hmm. And they won't state them in engineering terms, they won't state them in environmental terms, but they'll state them in terms that mean something to them. Exactly. And I, we can I actually need, I need use to provide this thing. my family, yeah. or I need, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, and everything will, yeah. So we really have to, uh, there's, there's actually two, two values then for this community involvement. We get not only their agreement and, and um, acceptance of what we're doing, but we get the value of what they see as important mm -hmm. on the other end, you know. And 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 there's also the uh, there's also the, uh, the disruptive new technology aspect that we have facing us here with something like drones. And George, it'd be interesting to see your um, your feedback on this. But if you had a situation where you woke up in the morning and there's a surveyor out in front of your house with a transit and some equipment and such, no big deal. If you woke up in the morning and there was two or three surveyors out there. Uh, you'd maybe ask, hmm, this is something bigger than I imagined. If you woke up some morning and there's 500 surveyors in front of your house and they're not going away, oh, this is something I better look into. I, don't, I have no idea what's going on. Same thing with drones. One drone in the park, no big deal. Mm -hmm. Two, three drones in the park, okay, I'm getting interested now. 500 drones overhead. One of the things we really need to think of is how the public would react to that sort of thing. Or even if we had a delivery system in Honolulu or Lanai for that matter. Uh, What's it going to be like? Are we going to use the, the freeway as the, as the airway that the drones fly over? Are we going to go over my house on the way to deliver something to you? This is, this is a complicated situation. Yep. And uh, so socializing this technology is part of what the, uh, what the community outreach is all about. George, uh, you know, we talked about uh, uh, last time, I think uh, you saw on a show the, uh, the example from Africa where uh, blood samples or blood uh, uh, packages are being delivered from a central location to a remote site. What would you think about something that uh, connects, say, Maui and Lanai by uh, by drone transit? Oh, I, th I think it would work. But another example, if you saw in the news this past week, uh, Hana Highway's uh, highway is actually collapsing. So you are now getting a community that's isolated, and that zipline or drone technology going over that landslide area, we can actually start flying out medical supplies or whatever supplies they need. So right in its own community within 26 square miles on the North Shore of Maui, drones would fit that bill 100% with all those cliffs there. We have something right there in our backyard. We don't even have to cross the ocean to actually show that it'll work. And that would be interesting to put together an example and Lanai is a perfect place to do that. Uh, it's got all the right marks for a, uh, a compliant environment, a willing population. George has been the, the stimulus for a lot of that, all of that, I should say. And uh, uh, so maybe we could think about that, George. Think of a, a humanitarian assistance, disaster response type functionality that we could run as part of the National Guard's Makani Pahili every year, like where you and I met four years ago. 
Oh, yes. Let's, let's think about that. As part I mean, of the, George, part of the community involvement for this year could be that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just running, uh, flying out an AD to a beach gore on the North Shore from the top of Keomoko Road, I mean, that'll, that, that'll do wonders, just that alone. Okay, that's the uh, defilibrator? Yes. Is, ah, what do they weigh? Uh, they're, they're at, a what, less than those. two pounds? Yeah. A couple pounds? Two pounds. Okay, so we could get them on a lot of fixed wing will carry that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're probably talking about a fixed wing here, I would guess. Oh, we could go, we could do multiple fixed wing yeah. depending on distance. You know, you okay. choose the right platform for the right job. Let's take that on, George. Let's make that a, 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 something we can uh, dial up the, <clears throat> our friends in the guard and see if that's something interesting to them from Makani Pahili. Yep. I mean, just simple messages. I mean, why not? I, I'm, I think a lot of um, organizations are more willing this year to actually, let's go do something. And everything in the name of training, we can get a lot of things done. And then take that training experience and actually turn it into real life use within uh, organizations throughout the state. Yep. That's an, a pretty incredible start for the year. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we should have a limit on this show of how many bright ideas can be put forth on the table or from our <laughs> contributors we, we, we have, we have to cut everything, otherwise you're going to be out of a job. So. <laughs> right. And, and when we have Daryl Wong on the show, we actually have a limit of three bright ideas per show, just okay. to make sure we don't get uh, overwhelmed. But, uh, but that goes into the realm of community involvement. Now yeah. we've got the Lahui, we've got the manpower to share these ideas, and we can get a lot of these things done on a massive scale. Yep. It's not just us. That is so cool. George, uh, um, I, I can't thank you enough. Enough shout outs to you and you and Mike for what you guys have been doing with uh, uh, Drone Services Hawaii and Josh, uh, Marine Environment and such, and the interest you brought to the table and, and the others. Mike is not here today, I don't think, but uh, uh, work he's doing up in Palolo and Nanakuli. So we're beginning to see these pieces happen all over the place. We can, and, and, it's probably best not to try to organize them. Just let them grow and go on their own. Share with each other what works, what doesn't work, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, begin turning this into a, sort of a standard operating procedure that we can all benefit from. And as long as there's someone there, or a community there at least, that knows what's going on everywhere, that can at least you know, kind of keep tabs or, or understand what's going on. This show is that connection. There you go. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> Jay Fidel, we have a reason to exist. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so we're there. Anyway, uh, we're going to wrap this up, uh, our first show of the year. And uh, looking forward to seeing all of our viewers uh, send all their comments. And anybody wants to come on this show, by the way, anytime 2017, you've got a complaint, you got an issue, you got an idea, show up. Give us a call and, and you're here. And uh, George Purdy, I'm on I. Thanks for being here on the first day of the year. And Josh, uh, Hayes, aloha. thanks for your first time on the show. First timers uh, come back, second timers. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm okay. happy. Thank you. Thank you for having me on.